Hello friends, welcome in the video. Let us learn about the drug Bedaquilin and we will be covering all these sections. Bedaquilin, a drug used for treatment of TB. This is for your information. Before going further, request to like, comment and subscribe the channel. Don't forget to press bell icon for receiving similar updates. This drug Bedaquilin has been approved by US FDA to use as a part of combination therapy in adults with pulmonary multiple drug resistant tuberculosis that is MDRTB. Bedaquilin may be used to treat adults having age 18 or more than 18 years with a confirmed diagnosis of pulmonary multiple drug resistance TB. It is not recommended for all MDRTB patients. And this drug is given in the form of beta-choline fumarate. Apart from adults, this beta may also be used in children, HIV infected persons, pregnant women and persons with extra pulmonary TB. Now we will cover the structure of beta -choline. This is the structure of beta -choline. Molecular weight is 555.50 Dalton. This is the molecular formula. And here is the IUPAC name of beta -quilin. Further, if we look at the structure of beta -quilin, it comes under the class of diaryl quinoline, having combined quinolic central hydrocyclic nucleus. This beta is chemically compound with fumaric acid in ratio of 1 is to 1 as beta fumarate. If we look at the structure of beta the structure formula has two major components. First is a hydrophobic part containing NCHT CHT groups, and this group has a vital role in binding to the enzyme ATP synthase. The second component is H2 binding acceptor donor that provides stability. Further, we look at the structure of bidacolin. We'll come to know that NTTB activity of this bidacolin is due to diarylquinoline ring the side chain with NN dimethyl amino terminus, the hydroxyl group and the naphthalene moiety. These four things are very important for beta to act as anti-tubercular drug. Now we will see how beta acts and what is the mechanism of action of this drug. To understand the mechanism of action, we have to look at the structure of mycobacterium, especially its outer part outer part consisting of cell wall and inner membrane. We can see at the outer part there is presence of mycolic acid which is unique to mycobacterium only. This is periplasmic space where protons are present. Towards the site of cytoplasm under the cell wall there is presence of an enzyme which is called ATP synthase. ATP synthase is the target of bidicolin. This enzyme helps in the generation of ATP which is essential for survival of mycobacterium. Flow of proton by the help of ATP synthase helps in the generation of ATP. ADP is converted into ATP. When beta is given, it acts on ATP synthase and further generation of ATP from ADP is blocked. It means beta inhibits ATP synthesis by blocking the proton flow, due to which there is no ATP production resulting in the death of the cell. Let us see dose of beta which is available in the form of tablet. The recommended dose of beta for the treatment of MDR in adults is as under. For first and second week, 400 mg is taken in the form of 4 tablets of 100 mg each, given orally once daily. After that, from 3rd to 24th week, 200 mg taken in the form of 2 tablets of 100 mg 3 times per week and for a total of 600 mg per week. To see the full effect of drug and to maximize absorption, beta should be taken with food. But what happens if the dose is missed? If the dose is missed during the first 2 weeks of treatment, Patients should not be given the missed dose and usual dosing schedule should be continued. From third week onwards, if a 200 dose is missed, patients should be given the missed dose as soon as possible. 
and then resume the three times a week regimen. Do not exceed 600 mg in a seven days period of time. Now we will look at the side effect of bidacolin, which are very important to consider. Cardiotoxicity, which appear in the form of abnormal heart rate. Hepatotoxicity, which result in the variation of enzymic activity and jaundice. Renal toxicity is also seen in case of bidacolin. Other side effects of bidacolin includes headache, dizziness, nausea and vomiting, hemoptysis characterized by bloody cough from lungs. Side effects also include increased amylase and increased transaminase activity which are indicative of hepatotoxicity. Rashes also occur in some cases of bidacolin. Arthralgia and myalgia may develop characterized by joint and muscle pain and chest pain may also be observed due to intake of bidacolin. Few more side effects of bidacolin include fatigue, anorexia and dark or colored urine. Now we will consider the patient counseling part in which information has to be provided to patient. Patient should be advised about eating food before medicine. He should be advised to abstain from alcohol and other hepatotoxic drugs. Patient counseling also includes to report any signs and symptoms of adverse drug reaction to their healthcare provider of the potential benefits and harms of bidacolin drug that treatment non-adherence could result in treatment failure, relapse or acquired drug resistance. Now we will see drug interactions of bidacolin. Bidacolin is metabolized by an enzyme cytochrome P450 reductase. It is well known fact that activity of this enzyme can be inhibited or induced by many drugs. Therefore, co-administration of bidacolin with rifamycin like rifampin, rifapentin, rifabutin and other strong enzyme inducers should be avoided. Bidacolin therapy also includes patient monitoring which is related to cardiac toxicity, hepatotoxicity, and renal toxicity. Patient monitoring also includes therapeutic drug monitoring, microbiology monitoring, and monitoring of side effects which are observed due to bidacolin. In case of cardiotoxicity monitoring, as we know, bidacolin may cause an abnormally and potentially fatal hazardism. Therefore, Patients should be monitored for symptoms of cardiac toxicity by ECG pattern or ECD reading. ECG should be obtained at baseline and repeated at 2nd, 12th and 23 weeks after treatment is started. Weekly ECG should be done for the person taking bidacolin with drugs like fluoroquinolones, macrolides and clofazimin. And the patients having history of Tosets de Pointus, congenital long QTCF syndrome, hypothyroidism and bread arrhythmias or uncompensated heart failure or the patient have serum calcium or magnesium or potassium levels below the lower limits of normal. Hepatotoxic monitoring is done by monthly testing and measurement of AST, ALT, bilirubin and alkaline phosphatase level. For renal toxicity monitoring, no dose adjustment in patient with mild to or moderate renal impairment and requirement of dialysis. But in case of severe renal failure, this bidacolin should be used with caution. Microbiological monitoring includes culture of sputum monthly throughout and at the end of treatment even after the conversion to negative culture. Side effect monitoring includes Weekly assessment of nausea, headache, hemoptysis, chest pain, arthralgia, and rashes. Therapeutic drug monitoring includes if bidacolin is given with rifamycin and other enzyme inducers, monitoring of serum drug levels should be performed to ensure adequate therapy and minimize the risk of acquired drug resistance. So here we complete about the different sections of the drug bidacolin drug use for treatment of multiple drug resistance TB. Hope this information was useful for you. These are the references used to prepare this video. 
the links of which have been given in description box. You may click to obtain full details. Don't forget to comment as your comments are motivation for us. Like video, subscribe channel for receiving similar updates and press bell icon. Be safe. Surashitrain, Dhanyavad, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.